My work is essentially about stitch. And so the project really reflects that. Threadbearing witness obviously has thread in its name. And it's about using thread as a chronicle of shared making and a testimony. Um, and, and thread is very much used as a means to tell a story. And identifying stitch is a, co a common language, a language that we can share universally and globally. It was very, the project was in response to migration. It was one of the defining issues of our time. And has been a critical issue really in the public consciousness since about 2014, 15, when the media um, picked up the story of that migration into Europe. And so, along with things like global, um, you know, uh, global warming, it's become something that I think has been very sort of prevalent in terms of our, our discourse and, and really a crisis that we need to take responsibility for. I think, importantly, ask the questions, you know, what, what can art do to engage with these kind of big themes? It's involved me going and working with lots of groups, with individuals, going to refugee camps, and um, essentially it works in three strands. It's had the one strand which is about the production of, of artworks, big stitch, sort of monumental narrative works. Secondly, it's inviting artists such as Kenny and Lucia to, to, to show their work and be very much an important presence in the exhibition. And then there's a public participation project. So it's a bit complicated in terms of how it's formulated. Um, and I wanted to sort of reflect a little bit initially on some of the way some other artists are engaged, engaging with the whole notion of migration. Um, initially, you, you, I'm sure you're familiar with Ai Weiwei's uh, Law of the Journey, the 70 meter vast um, raft, life raft, with inflated figures. In bed, these inflated, sort of faceless figures are really a powerful piece which was shown at um, the Prague Trade Fair. And then there's, you know, I could show you lots of different examples, but I just thought I'd make reference to a couple. And then this one is Banksy. So again, you may be familiar with this. And part of the reason I wanted to show this is because it's a piece that was shown, in, is in, or was in, the uh, Jungle Calais camp itself. And it, just, it shows Steve Jones um, carrying an early Apple computer with a sack of belongings on his back. And of course, Steve Jobs was the son of Syrian migrants. Um, so that has its own sort of power, uh, powerful resonance. And a, a, a small quote from Steve Jobs, he said, we're often led to believe migration is a drain on the country's resources. Apple is the world's most profit, profitable company. It pays over £7 billion pounds a year in taxes. And it only exists because they allow a young man in from homes. So that's worth reflecting on. So these, these artworks, you know, just looking at those two examples, they can present us with uncomfortable truths. Facts about power and powerlessness and privilege. Troubling questions about nations, borders, inclusion and exclusion. And these are the kind of questions I felt, to some extent, I, were, I had to embrace. Um, and alongside that, there is the issue of the authorial voice, ethics of collaboration with some of the groups I'm working with, and the notion of inclusion and the lack of consistency in the way um, I've been working with those who, who are participating. And this has all been deeply challenging. Um, issues of responsibility and of safeguarding protocols, really complex beyond anything I've ever embarked on before. But then in a way you reflect back and think, well why wouldn't it be complicated um, and deeply questionable? Because the whole subject is very messy and the only, in, in, in terms of what I'm doing, the only common de denominator is uh, the language of textiles, the language, language of stitch, human dignity, I hope, and the desire to be led by those who want to participate. So in terms of the project, I have learned, I've learned, I've learned and I'm still learning, and it feels almost just like the beginning. Um, so I thought I'd give you a little bit of background. Um, 
you know, I think we all bear some responsibility to engage with these big issues, but I have some personal background. I have, um, my family is deeply connected um, through the second, of course, Second World War migration from Greece, and Greece, um, after the Second World War, it had a civil war, so this conflict is enduring. And part of the, the sort of complex entanglements of lives and politics. So, so I feel very, you know, my family is very much part of that. And this slide shows my daughter in the bottom image. Uh, I have three daughters, and this is my second daughter, who has always been, she's been one of those girls who's always been very activist in terms of, you know, her, her thinking. She was the kind of girl who wrote to prime minister Prime Ministers and Presidents from a very early age. And so she gave up a good job, you know, and I think a lot of young people have, you know, engaged, well, you know, took, took, took up the baton and took on the responsibility of going and working very closely and volunteering in those kind of really critical sites. And she did that. She went out and she, not only that, but she set up a small organisation within Dunkirk called the 